Hi guys, this is Sayyid Muhammad Wakas. The topic which I'm going to discuss today is related to chill drinking water system design calculation. And this is the spreadsheet which I'm going to use for this designing of uh, chill drinking water system. So let's get started. Uh, before starting the design calculation, uh, let me just tell you about the spreadsheet. Uh, I have uh, used the different colors just to differentiate. So this basically green color are the input values from the user. Green text is basically the input values from the user. And the red color values depending on the type, uh, depending on the selection which you made from the top four rows. So you, as you can see here, the green and the red color. So first of all, you have to uh, determine the type of the building in which you are going to place this uh, chill drinking water system. So you have to select uh, from here the type of the building. So based on the type of the building, if you select the restaurant, uh, you can see the gallons per person is uh, 0.1 gallon per person. So this value will be changed based on the type of the building. So if I select the uh, hospital, this value will be changed. So let's say I'm going to perform the calculation for school building. So if I change this to school, you can see that gallons per outlet uh, per hour is five gallons. Now the second thing over here is the water inlet temperature. So you have to check this water inlet temperature from the local authorities of your area. So let's say I'm going to use uh, 75 degrees Fahrenheit of uh, water inlet temperature. If I change this to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, you can see that this value will be changed. The BTUs per hour per gallon will be changed. So this value BTUs per hour per gallon depend on your water inlet temperature. So if I change this to 90, this value will be changed to 374 BTUs per gallon. So here I'm going to use water inlet temperature at my area is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to use 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And this uh, design of uh, drinking chill water, it depends, it's uh, on 45 degrees Fahrenheit uh, supply temperature. So we are going to supply 45 degrees Fahrenheit uh, uh, supply temperature at the drinking fountain. And the water inlet temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, next thing come over here is the room temperature. Room temperature where we are going to place the fountains. So drinking fountain uh, area temperature uh, which I have selected here is uh, there are total three temperatures 70, 80 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So normally we are placing at the corridors area. So I'm going to use 80 degrees Fahrenheit uh, is the room temperature here. So this 80 degrees Fahrenheit uh, if you select here. So these values comes up if I change this to 70. Uh, from here room temperature if I change this to 70 then these values will be changed accordingly these circulation losses in the pipes as well as for the circulation pump capacity calculation later I will tell you about this so I'm going to select 80 degrees Fahrenheit here so next thing over here is the uh, pump horsepower so how in this we have to assume over here it's uh, if you see here we have pumps from uh, 1 by 4 to 2 horsepower so we are going to assume the uh, pump horsepower of 3 by 4 so based on this selection your heat load will be calculated for your pump so if I use 3 by 4 you can see that this circulation pump heat will come here which is 1908 BTUs per hour if I change this to let's say 2 horsepower then this value will be changed to 5090 so circulation pump heat input depends on the horsepower of the pump which you assumed in here so here i'm going to assume the horsepower of 3 by 4 so uh, next thing you have to count the number of outlet as i told you green color is the input from the user so you have to go to the drawing count the number of outlets and use in here let's say the number of outlets check from the drawing is 60 and these values as I told you depending on the selection which you made here 
so now we have to calculate the load due to the above usage here so simply multiply these three values and you will get the load that is 75,000 BTUs per hour so next uh, we have to calculate the losses circulation losses in the pipes this one but before that we have to write all the piping lengths which we have used in our project so you have to write all the pipes in here whatever you have used in your project then you have to go to the drawing and write the length in here you have to check the length of each pipe segment and add it in here so so after checking the lengths in the drawing of each pipe segment i have right in here let's say these are the lengths which i have right here and uh, uh, we need to convert this into feet so i just need to multiply this value with 3.28 to get this length in feet so you have to write in here everything and then you have to proceed towards the circulation losses in the pipes so now i have to calculate the circulation losses in the pipe so i have write uh, the pipe lengths in here which is the same as here and these values in btus per hour per 100 foot of the pipe so these values depending on the room temperature which you selected in here 80 degrees fahrenheit if i change this to 90 the values will be changed these values will be changed accordingly so I have selected 80 so these values are in here so simply you need to multiply length with uh, this one you will get uh, the circulation losses in the pipe in BTUs per hour since this value is in per 100 foot of the pipe so you need to multiply them and divide by 100 to get in BTUs per hour per foot of the pipe so total uh, losses you calculate here is 4650 BTUs per hour so now the third thing which we have to calculate here is the circulation pump heat input so as i told you it depends on the horsepower which you assumed in here so 3 by 4 horsepower which we assumed here the circulation pump heat input is 1908 BTUs per hour so now we have to add all of these uh, uh, load which we calculated that is 75,000 4650 and 1908 after adding all these values we get the total BTUs per hour 81558 BTUs per hour now we are going to use 15% as safety factor so 15% of this will be added into 81558 so total BTUs per hour calculated here is 93792 BTUs per hour so load is done now we proceed towards the circulation pump calculation so in circulation pump uh, calculation we will calculate uh, the circulation pump uh, capacity in gpm as well as we'll calculate the circulation pump head so i have uh, right to uh, all the pipes uh, which i have uh, used in this project and uh, again uh, these are the lengths the same which i computed here above and these values in the red color are again the same depending on the room temperature which you selected in here 80 degrees Fahrenheit so these values in gallons per hour per hundred foot of the pipe so again you need to multiply this 600 with 14.6 and you need to divide by 100 because this value is in per hundred foot of the pipe so we'll get uh, uh, the value of 88 gallons per hour for one inch pipe so same way you have to write for one quarter and one and a half inch pipe and you get the total gallons per hour that is the sum of all all of the above so it is 135 gallons per hour so again we have to add 20 percent as a safety factor so after adding 20 percent safety factor we will get total 162 gallons per hour so if i want to convert into, into gpm divide by 60 divide this value by 60 i will get 2.7 gpm but this is not uh, it is not decided that we are going to use 2.7 gpm for the circulation pump 
we need to check one more thing and then we decide we are going to use or not so uh, minimum we use 3 gpm per circuit in uh, designing of the drinking shear water system so number of circuits we have to check so we have to go to the drawing and check number of circuits so let's say we are going to use five circuits and we say that minimum 3 gpm is required for each circuit so total uh, value which we calculate here for circulation pump is 3 to 5 which is 15 gpm now we have to decide so whichever value is greater here so we have to use as circulation pump capacity now this one we calculated is 2.7 gpm and uh, this value which we calculated here is 15 GPM. 15 is greater, so we are going to use 15 GPM is the circulation pump capacity. So you have to decide based on which our value is greater. So I'm going to use circulation pump capacity of 15 GPM. So now I'm going to calculate the circulation pump head. As you know that for the head calculation, we have to check the furthest pipe length for supply and return and uh, to calculate the head we have total two type of losses which we have to compute one is the straight pipe length loss and the fittings and component losses so uh, here i am going to assume 50 percent of straight pipe length losses uh, to be used for fittings and components so that's why i multiply this with 1.5 here to get the pump head so we need to multiply uh, uniform friction head loss with 1.5 to get the circulation pump head. As I told you in the previous videos as well, uniform friction loss we normally use is 4 to 6 per 100 foot of the pipe. So here I am going to use 4 foot per 100 foot of the pipe as a uniform friction loss. So 1.5 into, you need to multiply this with the total piping length total piping length so we have a uh, uniform friction head loss as i told you i have used 4 foot per 100 foot so 4 divided by 100 into total piping length so again you have to go to the drawing and you have to check the furthest piping length that means from the source of supply which uh, in that case is circulation pump so from circulation pump to the furthest outlet in the drinking chill water system you have to check the length let's say it's 100 meter which is equal to 328 foot so you have to use this value in here so circulation pump head will be 1.5 into 4 divided by 100 into 328 so head calculated here is 19.7 feet if you want to convert this into psi just multiply this with 0.433 you will get a head loss of circulation pump in PSI. Now the one last thing you have to calculate here is the gallons to be cooled. That means storage capacity we have to calculate here now. So in order to calculate the storage capacity, first thing I have to do here, I have to use this formula. Pt is equal to gallons to be cooled into delta T into uh, 8.3. So this formula I'm going to use in here. So, so gallons to be cooled. I know that the BTUs, total BTUs I have calculated here is 93,792, which I have, uh, uh, which I have written here. So gallons to be cooled is equal to this value divided by delta T into 8.3. Now delta T, as I told you, the water inlet temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit here and the uh, supply and the chilled drinking water system uh, temperature which we select is which we selected here is 45 degrees fahrenheit so 75 minus 45 equal to 30 so we have to write 30 in here 75 equal minus 45 equal to 30 so gallons to be cool calculated here is 377 gallons now we assume that 50 percent of the water will return back to the chiller and 50 percent will be consumed 
so that 50 percent will come from the makeup water so now we are going to calculate the storage capacity so if we calculate the storage capacity since we said that 50 percent of the water will return back to chiller and 50 percent will come from the makeup water so we just need to multiply this gallons to be cooled with 0.5 to get the storage capacity and so now we got all the values as you can see here chiller cooling load which we calculated is 93,792 BTUs per hour this one and storage capacity which we calculated here is 188 gallons based on 50% of the water returned back to the chiller and number of pumps we are going to use here is two one duty and one standby and circulation pump capacity which we calculate here is 15 gpm based on the assumption of 3 gpm per circuit and circulation pump head which we calculated here is 8.52 psi so this is how you can uh, do the calculation for chill drinking water system I hope you guys learn something from this video for more videos keep watching my channel don't forget to subscribe thank you